will discuss about the topic ADT. As we can see the ADT consists of a decompressor and a series of scan chains and a compressor. The name uh, EDT means Embedded Deterministic Test. Embedded Deterministic Test means a extra circuitry is embedded into the IC and which generates a deterministic patterns in order to test the faults in the circuits. That's why the name Embedded Deterministic Test has came. Now we'll see what are the blocks and what is the circuitry consists in this embedded, embedded deterministic test. Here first of all we can see what are the signals which are engaged to this EDT. Here we can see the scan enable and scan clock. Both are going as an input to the all the scan chains. And we can see the scan channels are given as input to the decompressor and and the output is connected as at the compressor to the scan channels again and we can see the EDT clock and EDT update are the two signals which are going to the decompressor and the compressor here the EDT clock is given to the input to the decompressor in order to generate the decompressor patterns which are going as an input to the scan chains. Here the EDT update signal is used to reset the decompressor and the compressor whenever the new patterns or new chains uh, are loaded into the decompressor. Now we will see what the decompressor consists of. Decompressor consists of a series of flip flops which are connected into the feedback structure. We can say that the decompressor consists of a linear feedback resistors which are connected through a combinational logic. And the scan chains are driven by the outputs which are plugged out from these flip-flops. Now we will see what the compressor consists of. Compressor consists of a AND gates and XOR circuits. AND gate is used to mask the logics and the Comparator XOR is used to compare between the two scan chains. We will see in detail in the next sites. Now, where the lockup latches are used and why they are present? We can see that there is linear feedback shift registers are placed in the compressor logic. And now, these flip flops are driven by the EDT clock and in the scan chains are driven by the scan clock so there is a shift in domain from the compressor to the scan chains so there is a possibility that there will be a timing violation so in order to avoid that we are introducing a lockup latch in between this circuitry and there may be a chance that there will be a domain shift from scan change to decompressor maybe the decompressor may be driving by sequential element here so the lockup latches is introduced in between them there may be a chance that this particular flip flop may be driven by the scan clock and this flip flop clock may be derived may be clock may be a derived from the scan clock which may have a some delay so there may be a timing violation in between two so there is a lockup latch introduced in between these two flip flops in order to avoid the timing violation. Now this is the basic EDT timing diagram. As we can see the EDT clock is pulsed up first and then EDT update is happened. This, this phenomenon 
is apt is happened in the load unload procedure and you can observe that this phenomenon is happened before the shift so we have to remember that every time when shift happens before that we need to pulse the edt clock and then edt update and then proceed for shifting and we can see for the next load and load we are again pulsing the edt clock and then pulsing the edt update so this has to be uh, happened for the every pattern which is while loading into the edt logic now we'll see what is meant by x blocking suppose chain 1 has some data and chain 2 has some data and these are going out through an XOR gate because here 1 and here 1 the XOR operation between these two gives a logic 0 and here 0 in chain 1 and chain 2 has a logic 1 the XOR operation between these two will give a logic 1 here chain 1 has a don't care which is X and chain 2 has a logic 0 so the output between the x and 0 is x so the blocking because the chain 2 data which has to be to be driven out is blocked due to the chain 1 x data this phenomenon is called x blocking because the coverage of x chain 2 is lost because of chain 1 there are two types of x masking one hot x masking and flexible x masking one hot x masking means the chain 1 data and the chain 2 data are driven to the XOR gates via AND gates at, at, the, at a time only one chain data is driven out and the rest of the chain data is given a logic 0 because here the dominating input is 0 so only 0 will be driven out and here we are making here the one of the input of the AND gate as 1 and driving the chain to data means at the time at, 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 at a time only one chain data will be driven out this is known as one hot masking and the second one is flexible masking flexible masking is not a completely a masking technique here we are uh, adding chain 1 as an input to the one of the XOR gate and chain 2 as the one of the input to the other to the same XOR gate here there will be a loss of coverage because if any X in one of the chain will cause a loss of coverage in the chain 2 because the XOR of X and 0 is X so this is does not provide a complete coverage to the given scan chains so if any scan chain in order to execute a complete coverage will go back to the one hot masking technique so that particular scan chain will achieve that coverage now fault aliasing what fault aliasing means if suppose for chain 1 the good circuit output is 1 and fault response is 0 and for chain 2 the good response is logic 1 and the bad response is logic 0 if both the circuit chain 1 and chain 2 is good then 1 and 1 will appear here so 1 x or 1 is 0 if suppose the fault is occurred at chain 1 and chain 2 so 0 and 0 will appear here so the XOR operation of these two will also be 0 so there is no distinguish between good and faulty output for this both the scan chains so in order to avoid this we will go to masking patterns what masking patterns done means 
in order to get the coverage for chain 1 we will mask the chain 2 by making the one of the input of the AND gate to 0 so the chain 1 response will only propagate to the XOR gate and the chain 2 will be blocked so the coverage of the chain 1 is achieved in order to achieve the coverage for chain 2 we will make this as logic 1 and this circuit logic to 0 so only chain 2 data will be propagated out and the target coverage is achieved so we will make by masking each chain one time so by masking these patterns like this we can achieve the complete coverage suppose assume that an EDT circuit has a different chain length first suppose a pattern 1 is having a 6 bit length and scan chain 2 which is having only 3 bit length then how the tool will recognize the padding bits the padding will be added in such a way that the tool will see the next 3 preceding bits of the pattern 2 and I copy exactly these bits and replace with this the 3 extra bits here so the, now the output will be the XOR operation between the pattern 1 6 bits and the 3 bits from the pattern 2 and the residing 3 bits. And the next topic is RPCT Low Pin Count Test Controller. Here there are 3 types of LPCT controllers. Type 1 will decide if the scan enable pin is at the top level then it will decide and go to the type 1 controller if scan enable is not present then it, it is checks for JTAG tab controller pins are residing at the top level if S yes, then it will go to the type 2 LPCT controller if not it will go to the type 3 controller which generates its own scan enable pin by using the internal logic. In this video, we will discuss only type 1 and type 2 controllers in detail. Here, this is the block diagram for type 1 LPCT controller, which consists of LPCT clock, which is going as input to the LPCT controller and we are seeing the scan chain cha channel inputs which are going to the EDT logic and scan enable here we can see only the scan enable is only the input and the LPCT controller these, these two are only the inputs to the EDT which in, in internally generating the EDT update and EDT clocks. Now we will see what does this LPCT controller makes in order to generate this EDT update and EDT clock signals internally. In the next slide we will discuss about the internal circuitry of LPCT controller. This block diagram, this circuitry is the LPCT type 1 controller and this is the corresponding timing diagram we can see the LPCT clock is a free running clock and we are and the scan enable is going high for 5 clock signals here P1 is the output of this flip flop which is then negative H triggered so P1 will be recognized high in the negative edge of LPCT clock and P1 is going to the flip flop 2 which is negative edge triggered which is an odd not operation of P1 so P2 output signal will be in this way 
which is determined after one clock cycle. Here we have to investigate how the EDT update signal is internally generated. Here if you see thoroughly, EDT signal is an and operation between the scan enable pin and the P2 signal. So EDT update is the and operation between scan enable and P2 signal. So you can see the how the P EDT update signal is internally generated. Next you can see how the LPCT capture enable signal is generated here. LPCT capture enable signal is the under operation between P2 and not of scan enable P2 signal here and not of scan enable. This is how LPCT capture enable signal is generated here. And next LPCT shift enable. LPCT shift enable is the and operation between the scan enable signal and not of EDT update. Scan enable signal and and of EDT update signal. So LPCT shift, you need to observe that EDT update, after EDT update only, this is rising here, which means you are resetting the EDT compressor and decompressor and then shifting the clock pulses here. This is the key point should be remembered here because the basic phenomenon, the basic functionality of EDT is before shifting the clock pulses we need to pulse the EDT update signal in order to clear the data in the compressor and decompressor signal. So this is the timing diagram for LPCT type 1 controller. Next is the type 2 controllers. Here the type 2 LPCT controller is physically you can see only the TMS, TCK and TRST are only the signals which are driving from the external circuit followed by TDI. These signals will internally generate the update shift capture DR signals in order to drive the LPCT type controller. In the next slide we will see what this LPCT controller will have. Here has seen only the TMS and TCK are only the inputs to the type 2 controller. Here if you see here the TMS signal is going high and coming low and after it is again coming high and coming low. Based upon these TMS transitions this capture shift and update DR signals are generated automatically. Now we'll see how. When TMS signal is going high in this state diagram, you can see we can compare these two side by side. When TMS signals going from 0 to 1 and again 1 to 0, means TMS signal from 0 to 1 means from run and test or ideal state to 0 to 1 and 1 to 0 means it is there in the capture DR. So the capture DR signal will go high. And again it is keeping 0 up to few states like 1, 2, 3 means from 0 capture to shift DR and it's keep on shifting the data. So you can see the shift DR signal is, is set to high and after from the TMS signal shifts from 0 to 1 it goes to exit DR state 
means 0 to 1 it's going to exist dr still again after it is still high means if from exit dr2 it's going to update dr state so when it goes to update dr state the update dr signal is set to 1 so these three signals are internally generated by the tap controller by only getting the access of tms and tck pin at the output of the by controlling this TMS and TCK pins at the primary inputs of the IC. So by generating these signals, we can make the EDT update and the EDT clocks and LPC to shift enable signals that are automatically generated by the circuitry.